Hey guys, it's Hayden here, back with another non-verbal reasoning 11 plus video. And today you might be thinking, I've not seen this one before, what's going on? Well, it's a fairly new question type that we call operations. And the reason it's called that is because you are shown in this question type a series of operations. In this case, we've got one, two, three, four different operations being shown, which all symbolize and represent a change happening to a shape. For example, let's dive into number one here. Operation number one is showing us through these pictures that if I apply this operation, it transforms my shape by flipping it. As you can see, it's a mirror image. It's not rotated, but it's actually a reflection. And then if I apply transformation one again, it flips it back to its original state. So it kind of shows us our first type of operation here, which is where something changes and then it changes back again if applied once more. Now let's take a look at number two because it's a bit different. In this one, we can see through the series of images that operation two represents the shape being squished vertically. As you can see from here to here, it just gets squished this way a bit. Now, unlike number one, if we apply this transformation again, it doesn't then revert back to its original state. It actually squishes it even further. So there's a slight difference there between these two types of operation. Now, operation number three is a bit like number one. As you can see from the arrow, if we apply operation number three, it just splits it in half vertically. And then if we apply it again, it puts it back together. So a bit like number one, change and then change back. Whereas number four is a bit like number two. We're gonna make a change and then we're gonna make that change again. So as we can see from number four, we could describe this as the right-hand side of the shape, the right, right hand half, I guess we could say, of the shape gets shaded black. And if we apply operation four again, the left hand half also gets shaded black, leaving us with an entirely shaded shape. So with all this in mind, we can actually have a look at the questions now. So let's take a look at number one, a nice simple one to get us started. So the way it works is this, you will spend a little bit of time just making sure you understand the four operations or three operations sometimes in questions like we've just done. And then you'll dive into the actual question where you're given a figure on the left. And then you're given, this is the most important part, a sequence of operation numbers. So in this case, we've just got two numbers. It could be three, four, maybe even five that you're given. And we have to read this from left to right and complete these operations. So two means we need to apply operation number two, not both times, just once. If it wanted us to do it twice, it would have two twice. So each number represents one single change. So if we apply operation number two to our shape on the left, what does that mean we do? Well, Operation two said to squish it vertically. So this is going to become shorter. So straight away using my skill of deduction, I can get rid of A and I can get rid of C because they're still using the full size um, shape over here. We want something that looks like B, D or E. So we've done the first one, we can tick it off and then we move to the next one across, which is four. Now operation four told us if we're applying it once, we have to shade the right hand half black. So if I imagine this with a line down the middle and shaded black on the right hand side, I wouldn't get B because that's shaded on the left, good trap. I wouldn't get D because it's not shaded at all, but I would get E. So I hope at this point you're thinking, right, okay, I'm starting to understand how this question type works. It's like a, a bunch of different transformations that we have to apply, that each one is given a number, and then we just have to do the numbers in order. That's kind of how it works. So this time I've got three operations happening, and you'll notice the first sort of rule I want to point out, which is that it doesn't matter if they're in numerical order or not. For example, it doesn't go one, three, four, because that goes up in numerical order. It goes one, then four, then three. You just have to do it in order from left to right. So why don't you pause this video and have a go at this one yourself. Would I get A, B, C, D, or E when I apply these three transformations in order to the given shape on the left? Let's take a look, shall we? So first of all is one. Now one tells us to do a mirror image. So a mirror image means it's now gonna be pointing left. So I'm gonna get rid of B straight away and I'm gonna get rid of E. And the reason I'm being so confident here is because scanning ahead, I can see that number one doesn't come up again. Now if one came up again later on, I wouldn't be so quick to start scrubbing things out because that would mean it would flip back again. And then I should be really thinking about things that face right. So I'm always scanning ahead in my sequence to see if a number comes up twice, but it doesn't. So one means I'm now facing to the left. Cool, we've done that one. Four tells me to shade the right hand half in black. So really important that we did number one first because number four shading the right hand side in black no longer means this side, does it? Because we flipped it, it will now be the, the larger side. So we're looking for something like C or D. We can get rid of A it's gonna be C or D. Now the last transformation is 
number three here, the operation number three. Now three tells us to split the shape in half vertically, so it's not gonna be C, but it is gonna be D. So that kind of showed us the importance of really doing it in order. If I did four first, and I shaded in this part black, and then I did number one, and I did a mirror image, then I would have ended up with the answer of A, which would have been wrong. So it's really important we pay attention to the actual order that it happens in. So one more for you now, pause the video once again, no help from me here, I just like you to have a go at applying those operations in order, but you'll notice this time, three comes up twice. So how are you gonna think about that? Off you go. Okay, pretty cool question. So firstly, we should still think about doing it in order. Don't just jump the gun and say, oh, I'll just do both the threes first. Four comes first. So four tells us to shade the right-hand side in black. So if I'm starting to take my jottings now, my notes, which I really think you should do, by the way, you should sketch things out all the time in nonverbal reasoning. I'm kind of here now, right? I've done number four. And number three tells me to split it. So now I'm gonna to get to this sort of state, right? Like this, yeah? Now I'm aware that number three happens again in a minute, but we should still do it in order just in case something, something changes it. Number one tells me to flip the image around. So now I've got my black half on the left, and my little right, uh, little square on the right. And then number three tells me to combine it back together again. So if I combine these back together, I am gonna get an answer that looks exactly like A. Now you might be able to do that all in your head, but I do recommend when you're learning and practicing this new skill to definitely do some sketches. Before we take a look at the next question, I'd love to tell you about our website if you've just got one moment. Parents, if you're listening up and you're watching on your phone, then check out the link in the description. If you're watching on the telly, then scan this QR code right here to take you straight to our website. We have hundreds and hundreds of lessons all 11 plus prep based for year four students, for year five students, they're all premium lessons and every single one comes with a downloadable worksheet like the one you can see on the screen with answers and also another video walkthrough of that worksheet just in case they get stuck. There's a few freebies on there, so just make an account and you'll, and you'll be able to access them straight away. Check out the link when you get a chance. Back to the video, so new set of operations. I'm not gonna go through them this time because I want you to have a go. So. Take your time, pause this video, and make sure you can describe to yourself what is happening in these, in these operations. Is it the type of operation where something changes and then changes back? Or is it the type of operation where it's a bit more like a sequence, something changes and then it changes even further? Have a, have a think and then we'll have a look at the questions. All right, are we happy with these? So looking at these very quickly, we can see operation one makes the shape bigger and if applied again, it goes back to its original size. Operation two changes the line, the border. If we apply it once, it makes it bold. If we apply it again, it makes it a dashed line, interesting. Operation three we can see is rotating the shape 90 degrees clockwise each time. And operation number four, very interesting, because we didn't see this type in the last one. We can see that if applied, it adds a straight line, a, ho a horizontal line to the bottom of the figure. And if applied again, it adds another horizontal line to the bottom of the figure. So that's interesting, the idea of adding something to the sequence. So let's take a look then at number one. Again, I'm gonna let you pause the video here, guys, and have a go yourself. We, I would like you to apply operation two, three, then two again, and then four to this triangle here. What would we get at the end? Okay, let's take a look, shall we? So let's do it in order. If we apply operation two, firstly, to this triangle, two would make it bold. So I'm gonna get a bold triangle now, still facing down, fairly easy to, to keep in my head. Operation three, however, does rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So if I rotate this 90 degrees clockwise, this is where I think we should start doing our jottings. I've got a triangle now facing left rather than facing down, if we think of this as a, a, a direction that it's facing and it's still in bold, okay? But two happens again. So it's gone from bold now to the next step along in operation two, which is dashed. So actually, I'm just gonna start jotting this down so I don't forget. So I've now want a dashed triangle facing to the left, pointing to the left. And finally, we have to apply operation four, which adds a straight line to the bottom. So if I add a straight line to the bottom, this is what I should be looking for. Now, because of my sketch, it should be very easy to find the answer. A's got two lines, B's facing the wrong way, C is exactly what I've drawn, so it's my answer, D is bold, E is bold, so good trap answers there. And there we have it once more. Now, guys, I think you're getting the hang of this. So, you know, in, in typical mean teacher style, I wrote the hardest question I could possibly think of. Would you like to see it? Of course you would. So here we go. This one has five operations happening. As you can see, we've got two, four, three, four, three. And all I will say is there's a little learning point here, which is it is so important in this one that you really do follow it from left 
to right. You do not jump ahead and do different ones first. And I'll show you at the end exactly why that is true and why that's important. But why not have a go first at this question? Okay, are you ready? Let's do this. Let's see if we can get the hardest question in existence correct. So we've got this triangle, a bit like the last one, another triangle going on here. And let's apply number two first. So two tells us to make it bold. Do you know what? I can see that two doesn't happen again. So I, I just know that my last version is going to be in bold. But do you know what? Look at the answers. Bold, 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 bold. Two is almost pointless to us because none of the answers even gave us something that wasn't bold. So whatever. Let's just move on then. We've got four, then three, then four, then three. This is really interesting. So let's start jotting it down. If I've got my triangle here. And bear in mind my sketch is awful. So if your sketch is awful, it's okay. You just It's just an idea. Four tells us to put a line at the bottom. Cool. Three, however, tells us to rotate it. Now, when we're applying something like a rotation or adding a line to the bottom, we have to think about the whole cell, the whole figure. We're not just rotating the original shape. We're rot rotating whatever the entire thing is at this point. So there's a really big learning point there. So three is telling us to rotate this whole thing, not just a triangle, which means I'm now going to get, if I rotate this around, I would get a triangle that's looking a bit more like this. And that line that was at the bottom has rotated 90 degrees around to here. Bear that in mind because now number four comes in. It says to put another line at the bottom. Okay, let's put a line at the bottom. Do you see how this, this works, right? And number three comes in and tells us to rotate it once again. So now when it rotates, it's going to be facing this way. And those two lines have also rotated with it. So they're now here and here. Really, really, really tricky to visualize that in your mind, isn't it? So the answer I was actually looking for here was B. Now, if you said C, if you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, C, you were nearly there. And I'm going to show you right now why it's so important that we do the, letter, the numbers in order. Because if it said 2, 4, 4, 3, 3, so if I just switch these two around right here, and we just added both the lines at the start, okay, and then we did the rotations, we would have got both the lines together. In fact, they both would have been up here. Okay, not here. Right, so that would have been slightly different. Let's try another one. What if we did the rotations first? What if we did two, three, three, four, four? Well, in this case, we would have rotated all the way around first, and then we would have added the two lines to the bottom and got C. So I can see why you got C, if that's what you were going for. It's probably because you were looking at the fours and you thought, well, I can do them in one go. I know that just means add two lines, so I'll just add two lines. And you looked at the three and you thought, well, I know that just means rotate it two times, so I'll just do that. You weren't thinking about the fact that the order in which they happen is really important and can change your answer. So that's what I want to leave you with, guys, with, uh, with my teaching tips on this question type. Lots of little things to pick up, but that's one of the big ones that's going to differentiate you and other people that are trying to do these question types. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed this video guys it's time for you to leave a comment down below firstly just tell me if you enjoyed the video tell me what you want to see more of or just leave a silly comment you know it always makes me laugh to see them but here we go it's your turn same set of operations there just one more question for you to do i would like you to apply one three one two to this shape here on the left and leave a comment below what would you get and maybe even an explanation why that would be lovely and don't forget parents scan that qr code back further in the video or check out the link in the description to access our huge library of premium lessons for the 11 plus and start with some freebies by making an account. See you in the next video.